Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to the video tutorial on uh, object oriented concepts. So uh, in the last class we have discussed some of the uh, Java programs uh, but today uh, in this session I want to discuss some important topics that is not there for your syllabus because it is there in chapter number 7 and uh, as you can see in your syllabus chapter number 7 is not there for syllabus but some of the topics of this chapter number 7 are very important for your uh, future chapters like uh, chapter number 8, 9 like that. So hence I am going to uh, make a video of uh, some of the important concepts over here and uh, I think you already know about the recursion concepts. So uh, the recursion it is nothing but uh, uh, during the uh, run, run time of program the method will call itself. So that is called as recursion. So something or a process which itself calls during the runtime, it is called as recursion. The, and the best example for recursion is the factorial of given number. So you have calculated this factorial of given number in the first year PCD uh, where uh, we are calling a function or a method called as fact again and again to calculate the factorial of given number. So as you can see this example over here, uh, we have defined a class called as factorial and there we want to fact calculate the factorial of n number. So then look at this. So here if n is equal to 1 that is if uh, the value of n is 1 then factorial value is 1 so otherwise it will return fact of n minus 1 into n so n into fact of n minus 1 so as you can uh, see over here this code so here I am calling this method again and again so this uh, process repeats or again and again I am calling the same method so this process is called as recursion so repetition of method repeat calling of method Okay. So here uh, n value consider it as 4. So then it will calculate 4 into fact of n minus 1 that is 3. So fact of 3 again it becomes n into n minus 1 that is 3 into 2. Again 2 into 1. Like this it will call this uh, fact function again and again and your factorial will be calculated. So you can see over here. So we have calculated factorial of 3. Uh, we have called that fact uh, function. So we have passed the argument as 3, so it will calculate the factorial of 3, that is 3 into n minus 1, that is 2, again into n minus 1, that is 1, 3 into 2 into 1 is 6. So like this, I can calculate the factorial of 4, factorial of 5 and factorial of any number. So this uh, recursion uh, concept that we have studied in uh, the C program, same concept uh, here you can apply for Java. Okay. So this is one of the topic uh, which is uh, not there for syllabus but it is very important for you to know about the recursion. So the uh, next very important topic is access controls in Java. So as you know access control means uh, we, uh, how much uh, data we can access or uh, at what how much reason of data we can access directly. So in Java already you know that uh, there are three types of access specifiers that we are using public private protected so as you already have, you have known that public private so these both are access modifiers or access specifiers that we are using public is used to access any code or any methods uh, within the member function or non-member functions can also access that method or variable so when we define any uh, method or class as a private only that member of the class or method can access that uh, variable or the objects other cannot access that variable you know that and protected we are using it in uh, uh, usually we are using it in inheritance to access the members of super class okay so only super class and its subclass can access that variable other class cannot access that so uh, this is about access control already we have uh, discussed a lot about uh, this access control and this access control is very useful uh, and it uh, it points to one of the very important uh, feature of Java that is encapsulation. So where uh, we are hiding some data or we are wrapping up some data to prevent or to prevent the misuse of data or only some uh, authorized person can access that data to you uh, to provide that uh, facility. So we are using access specifiers over here. Uh, so three types of access specifiers as I already mentioned that is public, private and protected. So let us go to the next topic. Uh, one example uh, I want to show you that. Uh, let's go look at this. So there is a class test. Uh, so here I have declared one instance variable int a. 
the next instance variable that is int we uh, we have made as public so that everybody can access it the next variable that is int c we have declared as private so when we declare any variable as a private we can access it within this class only not out of this class okay so let us see why uh, we have declared one method set c uh, in time so we can access this c over here because it is present within the same class so c is equal to i i have assigned this uh, value of i to c next get c uh, is a one more method which i have decla uh, declared over here and that will return the value of c so after that uh, this again one more class i have defined here class access test public static void means string args next i have created an object of test that is ob by using new operator so test ob is equal to new test so here i have used the constructor default constructor so after that by using this ob i can access any values which is present in class test but here we can access a and also we can access b but this c we cannot access it so because a private this c is a private variable if you want to access this private variable that is not possible over here using this ob object so at that time your compiler will give error message you can look at this ob dot a is equal to 10 that is correct because it is integer uh, by default it is public next ob dot b is equal to 20 it is also correct because that b is a public variable but look at this ob dot c is equal to 0 so at that time your compiler will show you the error message that is you cannot access this variable so look at this ob dot set c is equal to 100 so that is also correct because this wide set c method uh, it is by default it is public in java so we can access that method in other classes also so only this code we cannot write it as uh, ob dot c is equal to 100 because c we have declared it as private variable so this is about access control so three types of access control that is public private protected okay so let us understand the static keyword so as uh, we have already seen this static keyword that we are using it in uh, our main method that is public static wide main so whenever uh, uh, for example uh, we we want to access anything in java any method or any variable so we have to access it by uh, by taking the object of that class so only by taking the object of that class we can access the methods or the variables which is present in the class so however in some situation so uh, consider if you have not created any object so but e even though we want to access that method so that is possible by using static keyword so that uh, the static keyword so when a member is declared so whenever we declare it as static so it can be accessed before any object of class is created so before the before we can create any of the object of that class if we use static then we can access it easily so hence uh, we, have, we have we know that uh, in public static wide main we have not created any object or of that main method so even though we can access that main method because we have declared it as static so here it has clearly mentioned that look at this when a member is declared as static it can be accessed before any objects of this class is created and without reference of any object so very important so we have not created any object so still we are accessing that class or that method by using static keyword if we declare that static even though we have not created the object uh, before the creation of object only we can access it okay so you can declare this both method and variables as static so we can declare both method and variable is as static so most of the common example of this cat static member that we are using main method so public static wide main okay so some of the important things that you have to know about static is look at this they can only call static method so a static method can only call static method next they must only access static data so this is the restriction of this static and third one they cannot refer to this or super in any way so by using this static we cannot access the super uh, uh, we cannot refer it to 
this keyword and super. Okay. So these are some restrictions uh, which are uh, which are posed on the usage of keyword static. Okay. So some examples are given. Please go through the example. Uh, one more important topic is final introduction introducing final so final is a keyword and we can declare any variable or any class as a final then we cannot change that variable suppose for example look at this final int file name is equal to one so if i declare that variable as final so you cannot change this value one so it is like a final okay we cannot change it so that is the use of final Okay, we have already seen uh, one uh, one something called as finalize finalization so finalize is a method there but here final is a keyword so that we are using it for variable finalize is a method don't get confused finalize is a method final is a keyword so when we declare any variable as final you cannot change that variable or you cannot modify that variable so you can look at this final in file underscore open is equal to two so the value two is fixed you cannot modify that value so this is the use of final okay uh, very important final is a keyword and finalize is a method that is used for finalization you already you already know about finalization technique okay uh, next uh, come to very important concept that is nested and inner class so you already know that nested class that is one class is present within another class we call it as nested class okay suppose for consider if uh, class b is defined within class a so then class b cannot exist independently of class a so a class is nested within a b so here a class can access any members whether it may be private or public members of B class because B is a outer class whereas outer class cannot access the members of inner class okay so that is very very important uh, so here we look at uh, this with example so otherwise it becomes very confusing for you so we look at this uh, condition or this uh, inner class uh, don't get confused inner class and nested class are different so here we look at this nested class with example and there are two types of nested classes available in java that is called as static nested class and non static nested class so here static nested class is one of a nested class where we are declaring this static as a keyword for that class so when we declare a, a class as a static so it must it must access only its enclosing class to the object it cannot refer to the other member functions directly Okay, only it can refers to its member function it cannot refer directly to other member function when we declare it as static hence uh, it is kind of restriction so we have already seen the restrictions of uh, static so it is kind of restrictions on them hence we are uh, will not uh, more oftenly we will not use this static nested class non static nested class is called as inner class okay very important non static nested class is called as inner class so most of the time 90% of the time we will use non static nested class where for the class we, we will not use any keyword like static keyword okay so to uh, look at the example uh, we can look at the one example over here look at this class outer that is outer class here i have declared one variable that is int outer underscore x is equal to 100 so after that uh, we have declared one method that is test here we have created an object of inner class look at this inner is a class which is not till defined but even though we are accessing it it is possible because outer class has knowledge of inner class but inner class don't have knowledge of outer class okay very important outer class is having its knowledge of inner class this is like your father has knowledge of you but you are not having any knowledge of your father okay so look at this in outer class only i am creating the object of inner class so that is possible here because outer class has all the knowledge of its inner class okay so inner inner is equal to new inner so using new operator i have created the object next i have called one method which is there present in inner class that is display so inner dot display so we'll come here look at this now inner class is defined within outer so outer class has all the knowledge of inner class but inner class will not have any knowledge of outer class okay 
So inner class inner. So here we have declared a one method that is display, which 